Joining us this morning from Richmond, Virginia, Tim Kaine. He's the former Virginia governor and also now the chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Good morning, Governor. Good to see you. Hey. Hey, Karen, great to be with you. Thanks. Well, I want to ask you about this because it seems like people are still skeptical about uh, what good the stimulus has done over the past year. Our most recent CNN poll shows that 63% of people asked think that the stimulus bill went to political projects with no economic impact. What do you say to Americans who feel that this $862 billion was basically wasted? Well, what I can say is, look, there's a great article front page uh, in the business section of the New York Times today that says the stimulus has done pretty much exactly what it was intended to do, which is get the economy growing again. There's a reason that the GDP has now increased for two quarters in a row after being in the tank. There's a reason that even the principal economists of, uh, of president, uh, presidential candidate John McCain are saying that the recession is ending because the stimulus is working. And Karen, the, the, listen to our critics. Our, our most significant critics are often members, Republican members of Congress and governors, who voted against the stimulus, who are saying it's a bad idea, but they're lining up for stimulus dollars, and in letters to federal agencies and others, they're saying, we need these dollars for Project X or Y because it is helping the economy. It's going to help grow jobs in our community. Uh, we've seen it save or create up to 2.4 million jobs, according to the Congressional Budget Office. So every day there's a new story. The president rolled out uh, investments in alternative energy, nuclear technology yesterday. Um, and I think people will, will start to see in every corner of this country uh, that the economy has been pulled back from well, the brink largely because of this package. Why do you think that nearly a third of people, or actually only a third of people, according to our polling, think that the stimulus money is actually benefiting the economy? Why is there that disconnect then if you think it is working so well? Karen, the reason there's a disconnect is that people are still hurting. I mean, let's, you know, let's be honest. We are in the toughest economy since the 1930s. When the president came into office, he was in the greatest recession since the 1930s, and every community in this country is, is feeling it. Um, we were losing 720,000 jobs a month one year ago. Now we've gotten those job losses down to about net even. Uh, but until we start to significantly grow jobs again, people are still going to be hurting and they're still going to be concerned. Right. The good news is if you look at that data, GDP growth, the change in the job loss statistics, increase in manufacturing activity, you can look at all those things and you can see an economy that is now starting to move ahead and as that happens, jobs will come along with it. I want to switch topics and ask you about Democrats getting that bombshell news this week that Senator Evan Bayh of Indiana is not going to be seeking re-election. We had him on the program yesterday and he said that one of the reasons was that he felt he could actually be more effective in the private sector. He had uh, not so many kind things to say about the way things are working in Washington. How big a blow is that to Democrats with such an ambitious public agenda? Well, we, we don't want to lose anybody, and, and obviously a, a public servant like Evan Bayh with more than 20 years of experience in elected office, that is a tough loss. But we're going to have a marquee candidate in Indiana, and there isn't any reason for Democrats to walk around with sad faces. We've got 59 senators, which is the most Democrats in the Senate since 1979, um, and we have a huge margin in the House. We have an edge among governors. Is it a tough climate? Sure. Any, any climate when the economy is tough is going to be difficult. There will be you know, volatile candidates and volatile campaigns. Um, midterms for presidents are traditionally hard. But this president is excelling at, at doing the tough things in a hard time the, the, and getting the economy growing again and restoring, you know, America's position in the world. He's doing both of them in a, to a great degree. We'll miss Senator By, but we're going to go after the Indiana race and we're going to compete everywhere. I want to ask you about that because he's known as a centrist. He's in a crucial swing state. And there are some political analysts who are saying it's basically sort of what we're seeing now in Washington, that there's really not room for centrists. This ultra-partisan environment is making that difficult. What do you say to people that wonder, are the moderates being pushed aside? Is there not room for those voices in Washington? Well, um, if you look at the Democrats in the, in the Senate, there are still plenty of people who really carry that proud centrist banner. I mean, Mark Warner, the, the uh, junior senator from Virginia, who is a great friend, Jim Webb, the senior senator from Virginia, I think they fit into that category, and they believe that they have a meaningful role to play. Um, if there's a party where centrists aren't really welcome, you know, it's really the other side. Uh, Arlen Specter was chased from the Republican Party into the Democratic camp this year because he was perceived as 
as too moderate, too willing to work with the other side. And we've seen the same thing in congressional races and in primaries that are happening. John McCain is being primaried uh, from the right side in Arizona because of a perception that he's too much of a centrist. And, and so if the our net party, effect is our that party nothing welcomes gets done in Washington, if the net effect of that ultra-partisanship, I mean, whether it's on the left or the right, is that nothing gets done, how, does that, how is that helping the American people? Well, well, Karen, I'm going to challenge you on that, and I think that you know what I'm going to say. The nothing gets done line is just false. Um, a year ago... On the major, uh, uh, on the major push for health care reform, we didn't see that happen. They couldn't even... Uh, okay, but, but look, let me, let me tick it off. The biggest Economic Recovery Act bill in the history of this country that is working, equal pay for women, something that has been dreamed about for generations, it's been passed and signed under this president. Four million more American children have uh, health insurance, low-income kids have health insurance because of this Congress and this president. This con Congress is doing a lot of heavy lifting on issues to get the American economy growing again. Is everything working exactly the way that, that I would wish? Absolutely not. On health care, we've got to get that done, and it has been slow and it's been tough. But seven presidents have tried this before President Obama We're, and not even no, been able I, to get a I know single that that's bill passed by a committee. But do you think that Bai is wrong by saying that nothing was getting done? It was basically, you oh, know, yeah. he's, gridlock? You know, he's complete, yeah, I, I would say this. He is completely wrong. He was right in analyzing that there's too much partisanship. Look, when you have a other side who's voting no on everything, that's frustrating. He pointed out, for example, that the Deficit Commission, seven Republican Senate, sponsors of the nonpartisan commission bill switched and voted against it because once President Obama was for it, they were going to vote no. That is frustrating, but it's not the same as nothing is getting done. We've pulled this economy back from the All brink right. under strong presidential leadership, and we're going to continue to climb. Well, it was great to talk to you this morning and get your point of view. Tim Kaine, uh, DNC Thanks, chairman, Karen. thanks for being with us. You bet.